Hey guys, it's Mike from Concrete Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over how to do heat stoichiometry problems. Uh, heat stoichiometry problems will usually involve a chemical reaction with the enthalpy or the delta H that's given, and you'll either be asked to solve for the amount of heat, uh, the moles, or the grams. And I have the flow chart written right here, and we have three example problems, so let's jump into it and work through these. And the first question asks, in the following reaction, how much heat in kilojoules is released when 4.97 moles so you're given the moles are burned, and then you're also given this chemical reaction. So in this chemical reaction, you can see when we burn one mole of CH4, we're gonna it's gonna release 802 kilojoules of, of heat. Um, this negative just means that energy is gonna be released. So we're burning 4.94 moles, and it's asking for how much heat will be given off. So we'll, we always start with the number that's given that's not in the chemical reaction, 4.97 moles of CH4. And then we're going to multiply it by the conversion factor. And you can see that we have moles and we want to get to heat, which is in kilojoules. So we just need to look at the chemical reaction. Whatever goes on top has to go on the bottom so it can cancel out. So we'll put moles of CH4 on the bottom. And whatever we're trying to get to will go on top. And we're trying to get to kilojoules, so we'll put kilojoules on top. I mean, for the numbers, we just have to look at the chemical reaction. So how many moles of CH4 do we have in our reaction? We have one. So we'll put one mole of CH4. And then how much heat do we have? We have negative 802. So we'll put negative 802 kilojoules on top. And then when you do that, you can see that the moles of CH4 cancels out. And you're left with just the kilojoules that uh, you want. So we just plug this in the calculator. 4.97 times negative 802. And then that will give us negative... 3,990 kilojoules if we take it to three sig figs. So that's how much heat will be given off. Again, this negative just means that energy is released. That's the first example. Let's take a look at the next one. So in the next one, we're asked to solve for the moles of H2 uh, that are required to, to give off 2,551 kilojoules of heat in this reaction. So once again, we have a balance, we have a reaction. You have to just make sure it's balanced. We have a reaction with a, a delta H that's given, and then we're asked to solve for moles. So that's an indication this is a, a heat stoichiometry problem. We start off with the number that's given that's not part of the chemical reaction, so not, not the delta H, but the heat that's given off. So we'll put 2,551 kilojoules. That's what we started with. Multiply it by the conversion factor. So this time we have heat and we want to get to moles. So it's just a one-step conversion. We'll put kilojoules on the bottom. So whatever whatever you started with goes on the bottom so it can cancel out. And we want moles of H2 and that's what's going to go on the top. Then we take a look at the chemical reaction. How many moles of H2 do we have in this reaction? We have three moles of H2. So we'll put three moles on top, and how much heat do we do we have in this reaction? We had 91.8. I'm dropping negative, so you, you in the end you you can't have a negative amount of moles. So that's why I dropped a negative because if we kept the negative here, then our answer is going to be negative. So you just want to make sure that the grams and the moles is always positive in the end. And then when we do that, you can see that the kilojoule cancel out, and we can just enter this in the calculator: 2551 multiplied by three divided by 91.8, and then our final answer would be 83.337, because of four sig figs, moles of H2. And that's the answer for the second question. Let's take a look at the last question. So in this last question, we're asked to solve for grams of C6H6, which is benzene, that must be decomposed to transfer 430 kilojoules of heat. And then we have a reaction with the delta H. So this time we are starting here. We're starting with, at the heat and then we're moving all the way to the grams. So this is going to be a two-step conversion. Previously we only seen one step conversion between heat and moles. Now we're starting from heat and then we're going all the way to grams. So we'll start with the given, which is 430 kilojoules of heat. And then the first step that we have to do is we have to convert the heat to the moles. So we got to get rid of the heat. So we put the kilojoules on the bottom. And then we want to get the moles, specifically moles of CCH6. So we'll put moles of 
C6H6 on the top, because whatever you're trying to go to goes on the top, whatever you're trying to get rid of goes on the bottom. And we look at the balanced chemical reaction, and in this reaction we see there's one C6H6, so we put that here, and then how many kilojoules is in the reaction? 630. After the first step, the kilojoules disappears, and then now we have moles of C6H6, and then we want to convert to grams. So this is the second conversion. Then we multiply by another conversion factor, put moles of the benzene on the bottom, so then that way it can cancel out. And we're trying to get the grams, so we'll put grams of C6H6 on the top. And then for this part, we just use the molar mass. So we can just look at what the molar mass of C of benzene is, and that's 78.11. Um, or you can calculate it, and if you're having difficulty of calculating molar masses, check out my video about how to do that. So we'll put 78.11 grams of benzene for every one mole of benzene. Because molar mass is how many grams there are in every one mole. And then when we do that, the moles of the benzene will cancel out, and then we're just left with grams of benzene. So we'll do 430 divided by 630, and then multiply by 78.11 and then that'll give you 53.3 grams of benzene. And that's how much benzene must be decomposed before 430 kilojoules of heat is transferred. And that's really it to heat stoichiometry problems. Um, you can just use this flow chart and just see where you're starting off at and where you're trying to go, and that'll tell you how many steps you, you need. And just remember, whatever is you're starting with is what goes on the bottom so it can cancel out and then wh whatever you're trying to get to will go on the top. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.